Okay, the next step in our analysis is to do the differential um, continuity equation, differential form of the continuity equation. And remember last time we had derived the Reynolds transport theorem which allowed us to move from a um, system perspective to a control volume perspective. Okay, where we prefer the control volume formulation because it allows us to have this Eulerian frame of reference where we can assign velocities and properties at a point. We're still not there yet because the form of the um, Reynolds transport theorem is um, integral and that's given by dB cis by um, dt is equal to d by dt of the integral um, of rho b dv over the system. Remember that this was an intensive property and this was an extensive property and that was shown to be equal to partial by partial t of integral over a control volume of rho b dv control volume plus the surface fluxes um, rho b u dot n d s. Okay? Today we are going to um, take the application of the Reynolds transport theorem to mass conservation, which said that dm by dt for mass, um, dm for a system by dt equals to zero, so that implied that d by dt of the integral or control volume for dv plus um, uh, uh, mass out minus mass in rho u dot dot n <laughs> ds is equal to zero. Okay, we did a few examples on that. Today we're going to take this form uh, over the control surface over here and um, convert it into a differential uh, differential form. Now remember the um, great theorems um, for the for the integral theorems. Um, uh, that's what we're going to use here today. Okay, so if you remember those, the first thing we, want to, we observe here is that we have two types of integrals here. So there's a volume integral and there's a surface integral. Um, and there's also one, one more problem and that has to do with this um, partial by partial t term. If we could somehow write everything in terms of one type of integral, either a surface integral or a volume integral, um, better to be written as a volume integral and um, somehow move this d by dt term into the inside of the integral, then we would have just a single integral over a control, an arbitrary control volume equal to zero. And we can do that exactly. Okay, so let's start by looking at the surface integral of rho u dot n d s. Now remember the integral theorem that tells us that this is equal to the integral over the volume enclosed by this control surface. Remember, our control volume um, is enclosed by a control surface. So the control surface is, in, is I, I, identical to the surface that controls the control volume. So this CV over here is the same as this CV over here. But that is equal to the divergence of rho u dv. Now, we had talked about this before, um, but we applied it to the concept of the integral over the, uh, the velocity. Um, okay? Now, in this case, we have the uh, uh, integral over rho u. Okay? Now, we've converted the surface integral to volume integral, so now our continuity equation becomes d by dt, the integral over the control volume of rho dv, plus the integral over the control volume of rho of div rho u dv equal to zero. If only we can move this time derivative to the inside of this integral, then we can combine both of these into, um, 
into um, one volume integral and then do something really cool with that. So here's what we're going to assume. Since we've assumed that the control volume is fixed in space and time, it's not, um, it's non deformable. So it's not changing with time. The shape of the control volume is not changing with time. Even if it was, we would have to do something a little bit different for, for, for that case. But still, in this case, one, um, the easiest assumption to do is to say that the um, control volume is fixed in space and time, then this integral over this partial derivative over the control volume can go in because the integral is not changing in time. Okay, um, so then we have this integral over the control volume of partial by partial t of rho dv. Okay, um, going from here to there, plus the integral over the control volume of div rho u dv equal to zero. Now the next step is to simply take that. So I'm going to write it here again. So integral over the control volume of partial by partial t of rho dv plus integral over the control volume of div rho u dv is equal to zero. Let's combine both of these into a single integral. CV of partial by partial t rho plus div rho u dv equal to zero. Now I'm going to make a claim here and say that the only way that this is equal to zero is if the integrand is equal to zero. Why can I make that claim? Well, remember when we selected our control volume, we didn't specify what the control volume looked like. Although, yes, we derived it for a uh, rectangular control volume. That was just for the sake of illustration. But we could have derived it for an arbitrary control volume. And this will hold to an, uh, for, to an, for an arbitrary control volume. And therefore, if this is true for any control volume, then it must be that the integrand is identically equal to 0. And with one jump you can go from the integral form to the differential form of the continuity equation plus div rho u equal to zero okay continuity or mass conservation equation okay this holds for a compressible incompressible um, flow there's a simplification for incompressible flow we'll see that um, in a bit but this is really powerful because now we have gone from just an integral formulation where we could, where we were, we had to make certain assumptions to simplify our analysis, say for example, a certain velocity profile at the inlet and the, and the outlet, to a differential form where we could actually now um, solve for the density or and or for the velocity by using this um, kinematic condition. We still need the Navier-Stokes equations, but this is one of the um, most important constitutive equations for um, uh, fluid dynamics right now.